today our topic we are going to discuss about the amino acids as a neurotransmitters in the central nervous system so here we have totally four types of amino acids which acts as a neurotransmitters in the central nervous system in that two are excitatory neurotransmitters and two are inhibitory neurotransmitters the excitatory neurotransmitters are the first one is glutamate and the second one is aspartate so here the glutamate and aspartate are known as excitatory neurotransmitters of the cns and these neurotransmitters are capable of exciting or depolarizing the neurons of the central nervous system and meanwhile the inhibitory neurotransmitters of the central nervous system are gaba and the second one is glycine so gaba is the chief and main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain and glycine is the chief inhibitory neurotransmitter only in the spinal cord as well as in the brain stem now out of all these four neurotransmitters that are discussed one by one now first i am going to discuss about the gaba as a neurotransmitter in the central nervous system so let us see the details of the gaba in the gaba we are going to discuss about the synthesis next we are going to discuss about the types of gaba receptors and the pharmacological actions of certain agonist and antagonists on the gaba receptors so here the gaba is known as gamma amino butyric acid this gamma amino butyric acid gaba is synthesized from the neurotransmitter or it is synthesized from the amino acid glutamate it is synthesized from an amino acid glutamate so glutamate converts into gaba mediated by the enzyme gab gab is known as glutamic acid decarboxylase so glutamic acid decarboxylase is the enzyme responsible for the conversion of glutamate to gaba and by this we came to know that we need the glutamate for the synthesis of gaba this glutamate is obtained from the substrate or a compound of the tricarboxylic acid cycle that is called as alpha oxoglutarate so here the substrate or the compound of the tricarboxylic acid cycle called as alpha oxoglutarate converts to glutamate by the enzyme gaba t the gaba t is known as gaba transaminase so gaba transaminase is the enzyme responsible for the conversion of alpha oxoglutarate to glutamate and glutamate is converted to gaba mediated by the enzyme gab and again after the actions of the gaba are performed the gaba is again metabolized by the same enzyme gaba transaminase and gives off the products known as succinic semi aldehyde and succinic acid 
these are the two end products are produced after the metabolism of GABA by the GABA transaminase. So this is how the synthesis and the metabolism of the GABA takes place. So I already said you that the GABA is known as the inhibitory neurotransmitter. So in the inhibitory neurotransmitter means the GABA as well as glycine in the central nervous system has a capability of hyperpolarizing the neurons. And meanwhile, we studied that glutamate and aspartate are called as excitatory neurotransmitters. They are responsible for the excitation of the neurons, that is, depolarization of the neurons. And uh, meanwhile, the GABA as well as glycine in the central nervous system responsible for the hyperpolarizing the neurons and it decreases the membrane excitability. So after we came to know about the synthesis and metabolism of the GABA, now let us see the types of GABA receptors and its mechanism of action. So here I am going to discuss about the types of GABA receptors. Here there are two types of GABA receptors, one is called as GABA A and the second one is called as GABA B. The mechanism of action of the GABA A and GABA B are totally different. So here first we will see about the GABA A. The GABA A receptor is also called as ionotropic receptor. Ionotropic receptor. So the GABA A receptor is called as the ionotropic receptor which means this GABA A receptor is also called as voltage gated chlorine channels. So what is the meaning of the inotropic receptor? So inotropic receptors are the receptors which are capable of opening the channels. They are called as ion channels. For example, when a ligand comes and binds on these receptors, they are responsible for the opening of ion channels. It may be a sodium channel, potassium channel, chlorine channel, like this. But here in GABA A receptor, the activation of the GABA A receptor is responsible for the opening of chlorine channels. That is the reason these GABA A receptors are also called as voltage gated chlorine channels and they are called as ionotropic receptors and meanwhile the GABA B receptors are called as metabotrophic receptors these are called as metabotropic receptors so what do you mean by the metabotropic receptors the metabotropic receptors are not connected with the chlorine channels opening and these metabotropic receptors are also called as G protein coupled receptors which means this metabotropic receptors are uh, responsible for the activation of secondary messenger system or in simple language I can say that the metabotropic receptor performs its biological action mediated by the secondary messengers example like cyclic AMP, DAG, diacylglycerol IP3, inositol, triphosphate. So these are the secondary messengers where all the metabotropic receptors performs its biological action mediated by the secondary messenger system. So that's the reason the mechanism of action of the GABA A and GABA B are totally different. GABA A is the ionotropic receptors and it is also called as voltage gated chlorine channels. And GABA B is called as the metabotropic receptors and they are called as the G protein coupled receptors and the biological action is mediated by secondary messenger system. Now let us discuss one by one. First I want to explain you about the GABA A receptor and later we will discuss about the GABA B receptor in detail. So here in the GABA A receptors 
the activation of these receptors are responsible for hyperpolarization by opening chlorine channels for example if this is the chlorine channel in the cell membrane when chlorine enters into the cell chlorine is the negative ion when negative ions enter into the cell the negativity inside the cell increases what do you mean by depolarization depolarization is the entry of positive ions into the cell when positivity inside the cell increases it is called as a depolarization but instead of positive ions here the chlorine is entering into the cell the chlorine ions are entering into the cell so because of the entry of these chloride ions it is responsible for the hyperpolarization of the membrane and it's it makes the membrane less excitable so that is the main action of this gaba a and here the gaba a receptor is made up of five subunits from different families there are like totally seven uh, family subtypes are present like there are alpha subunits alpha in alpha again alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 like that there are alpha 1 to 6 next beta 1 to 4 next is gamma 1 to 3 other than this gamma there are other family of uh, subtypes they are epsilon theta pi so like this so there are different uh, subunits are present out of all these subunits the gaba a receptor is made up of only five subunits from alpha beta and gamma which means the gaba a receptor is made up of two alpha 1 subunit and two beta 2 subunit and one gamma 2 subunit so here two alpha 1 subunit two beta 2 subunit and one gamma 2 subunit forms a pentameric structure and it is known as the gaba a receptor specifically present in the brain so this is the structure of the gaba a receptor in the brain made up of two alpha 1 2 beta 2 and two gamma 2 so in other locations the structure of the gaba a receptor is uh, quite different for example uh alpha 1 receptors are predominantly present in the brain in the same way the alpha 6 receptors are present in the cerebellum so like that in certain areas there are instead of alpha 1 there are alpha 6 so there are several subunits are present but predominantly in the brain the gaba a receptor is made up of two alpha 1 subunit this is very important that's why i'm repeating again and again two beta 2 subunit and one gamma 2 subunit so now let us see the structure of this gaba receptors and we will find out what are the agonist and antagonist at this receptor sites so now let us see that this is the alpha subunit that is alpha 1 adjacent to the alpha 1 there is the another subunit this subunit is called as the gamma 2 subunit and on other side of the alpha 1 subunit there is other subunit called as beta 2 and here i told you it is a pentameric structure so pentameric structure means there are totally five subunits and after beta 2 again you have alpha 1 and after alpha 1 again you have the beta 2 so here this is the structure of the gaba a receptor in the brain
it is a pentameric structure made up of 2 alpha 1, 2 beta 2 and 1 gamma 2. So here the chief agonist of GABA A receptor is muscimol. Muscimol is the chief agonist at the GABA A receptor and the convergent that is bicaculin is the chief antagonist at the GABA A receptor. Bicaculin is the chief antagonist at the GABA A receptor sites which means what is the action of this bicaculin on the GABA A receptor the GABA will come and bind and this bicaculin prevents the binding of GABA to the GABA binding site so that is the reason we are calling the bicaculin is the chief antagonist at the GABA A receptors but other than this there are like uh, different accessory sites for GABA A receptors for example GABA has a specific binding site and other than the GABA binding site there are also other modulatory sites for example the binding site for uh, barbiturates the binding sites for benzodiazepines the binding sites for others uh, reverse antagonists and other agonists so we will see what are the different accessory binding site of the GABA A receptors ok so here now you came to know about the pentameric structure of the GABA A now we are going to see the binding sites of the GABA A receptors in detail so before that I want to repeat the agonist of the GABA A receptor is muscimol and the antagonist at the GABA A receptor is bicaculin it prevents the binding of GABA at the GABA sites of GABA A receptors ok so now let us see there are two main binding sites of GABA one is called as the GABA binding site and other one is called as the modulatory site there are I told you there are several accessory sites for GABA A receptors for example uh, here this is the GABA binding site of GABA A receptor and let us consider this as a M called as modulatory site this is the GABA binding site ok and here it is the modulatory site so modulatory site means here you have several agents will come and bind to the modulatory site for example here it will bind to the benzodiazepines means in the modulatory site of GABA A receptor there is a separate site for the binding of benzodiazepines that is the reason this is called as benzodiazepine receptor benzodiazepine receptor is nothing but it is uh, located on the GABA A receptor but it is a modulatory site of the GABA A receptor facilitates the binding of benzodiazepines and other than the benzodiazepine there is another binding site this another binding site is for the antagonist called as flumazenil there is another antagonist which binds to the modulatory site of GABA A receptor called as flumazenil and other than this flumazenil there is a reverse antagonist which also binds to the modulatory site of GABA A the reverse antagonist is called as beta carbolins so beta carbolins are called as the reverse antagonist which binds to the modulatory site of GABA A receptors I will repeat here there is a GABA binding site and there are the modulatory site at the GABA binding site of the GABA A receptors the GABA will come and bind and facilitates its action and the modulatory site contain three different sites one is the benzodiazepine receptor second is the site 
for the binding of flumazenil and the third one is the binding site for the reverse antagonist called as beta carbolates other than this site there are other two sites for chlorine channel for chlorine channel also there is a modulatory site as well as the antagonist for example for the chlorine channels the modulatory site is barbiturate so barbiturate considered to be a modulatory site for the chlorine channel directly and the inhibitory or antagonist for the chlorine channel is called as picrotoxin so picrotoxin is considered to be a antagonist at the chlorine channel so these are the different binding sites at the GABA A receptor now in this I want to explain you more details about the benzodiazepine and barbiturates on the GABA A receptors think here that uh, if benzodiazepine comes and binds at the GABA A receptor it does not replace the GABA or it does not potentiate the effects of GABA I can say that it facilitates the binding of GABA to the GABA A receptor you have to concentrate here the action of benzodiazepines on the GABA A receptor is to facilitate the action of GABA on GABA A receptors which means when benzodiazepine binds at the GABA A receptor it increases the frequency of chloride channel opening it is not the duration it increases the frequency of chloride channel opening but meanwhile the barbiturate has a direct action on the chlorine channels that is same on the modulatory site if barbiturate binds to the modulatory site of GABA A it does not increases the frequency of the chloride channel opening rather than it increases the duration of the chloride channel opening so you have to remember here at therapeutic doses example thiopental so if the thiopental binds at the modulatory site that is directly to the chlorine cha chloride channel of the GABA A receptor it is responsible for the increase in the duration of the chloride channel opening so that is the main difference between the mechanism of action of benzodiazepines and barbiturates on the GABA A receptors what is the function of benzodiazepines benzodiazepines increases the frequency of the chloride channel opening and barbiturates increases the duration of the chloride channel opening so because of this the entry of the chlorine into the cell and entry of the chlorine increases the negativity inside the cell and causes membrane hyperpolarization and it makes the membrane less excitable okay so this is what uh, you have to know about the GABA A receptor in detail so here after the GABA A receptor I want to tell you about the GABA B receptors so what is the GABA B receptor I told you that the GABA B receptor is called as the metabotropic receptor okay and it is not the ionotropic receptor ionotropic receptor of GABA A action is responsible for the chloride channel opening they are voltage gated chloride channels but GABA B receptor here that is GABA B receptor here it is not ionotropic receptor it is a metabotropic receptor which means GABA B receptor stimulation or activation is not associated with the chloride channels at all they are the G protein coupled receptors and the activation of these receptors is responsible for the activation of the secondary messenger system inside the cell which means the stimulation of this GABA B receptor can cause decrease in the cyclic AMP inside the cell so decrease in the cyclic AMP inside the cell has two important biological actions the first one it decreases 
calcium conductance and second one it increases potassium conductance outside the cell means it prevents the entry of calcium and it prevents the depolarizing capacity of the neuron and at the same time it increases the potassium conductance out of the cell which means when potassium is going out of the cell again the negativity inside the cell increases because the loss of positive ions inside the cell can create negativity and it can cause membrane hyperpolarization so remember here the GABA A receptors and GABA B receptors both has the mechanism of action of membrane hyperpolarization but the mode of action is different one is performing its biological action through ionotropic that is uh, chloride channels and the GABA B receptors being it is the metabotropic receptors its biological action is performed by the decrease in the calcium conductance and also increase in the potassium conductance out of the cell and creates a membrane hyperpolarization and the main agonist for the GABA B receptor is a muscle relaxant baclofen and the antagonist is saclofen but remember baclofen is very important and a saclofen anyway it is not in the clinical use yet so that's why remember baclofen is the agonist at the GABA B receptors and uh, saclofen is the antagonist so by this we came to know the mechanism of action of uh, the GABA A and GABA B receptors and how it uh, decreases the excitability of the neuron and also how it creates the membrane hyperpolarization.